Have you been switching back and forth between task management apps, never quite finding what you need? I've been there too. And I think the reason most apps didn't work for me was simply because I hadn't implemented GTD in a clean way. I just recently realized that every app comes with some predefined setup that nudges me to use it in a certain way. And Todoist, for instance, they organize tasks around projects. So that's what I would do, set up different projects for every project at work and then keep tasks specific to those projects in those lists. And if you know anything about GCD, you might realize that this immediately takes you into the wrong direction. There are no project lists with tasks in them in GTD. So I have this hypothesis that all my previous attempts at doing GTD in a task manager failed because I was always doing an amalgamation of GTD and some task manager inspired setup. Now that I understood this, I think I finally am able to set up Todoist in a way that truly reflects the GTD framework. And the best part is it turned out to be super simple. So so first of all, this video probably won't take long to watch and setting up the system won't take you long either. But most importantly for some of you, because the system is so straightforward, you can use it even with a free Todoist account. So let's do it. Step number one in GTD is capture. So capturing any thoughts that come to our minds, tasks, project ideas, events. And the goal is to get information out of our heads and into external inbox. This frees up our working memory so we're not constantly worrying about remembering things. And in Todoist, you have an inbox list where you can drop all your thoughts and that's great, you should use it. But don't feel limited to just this inbox. I personally don't think it's realistic to stick to just one. For example, I have several inboxes, voice notes on my Apple Watch that sync to my Notion account, then saved for later items in my Slack, my email inboxes and the Todoist inbox. I collect my thoughts in whichever inbox is most conveniently accessible accessible to me in, in the moment. And the key to it all for me is to process all of them once a day together at once. I think as long as you do that, you'll be fine having multiple inboxes. Oh, and if you're using a different task manager that doesn't have a built-in inbox, you just create a project or a list and call it inbox and that's it. Next, we have to set up our projects, but not the work projects as I used to do it. No, we need to use these projects, this, this feature to set up GTD lists. And once I realized this, I feel like I unlocked GCD on Todoist. So what list do we need? First of all is the next actions list. I have both a personal and a professional one because I have quite a few tasks in them and it's easier for me to review them when they're separated into two lists. But if you don't have as many tasks or if you're fine having them all together, then just feel free to keep them as one next actions list. Then you'll need a projects list for any tasks that are made up of more than one step, a waiting for a list for items you delegated or things that you're waiting for from other people or companies like that online order refund that I'm afraid to forget about and a someday maybe list for ideas you'd like to one day get around to. So go ahead and create them as projects in your Todoist and conveniently you'll see that this leaves you with around five projects, the maximum number allowed in the free version of Todoist. I did not design the system to fit into the free tier, but it worked out perfectly somehow. Now let's move on to step number two and three uh, of the GTD framework, clarify and organize. The process here is exactly the same as I described in my file effects and GTD video. Look at each item in your inbox and ask yourself, is this still relevant? Once I made capturing easy by having convenient inboxes, I realized that I often capture too much. Something seems very important in a moment, but totally loses its urgency or relevancy like after a day or two. And I think that's totally okay. Like capturing everything gives me peace of mind, even if I end up deleting some items later. So if an item is not relevant anymore, we just delete it. And if it's relevant, we ask ourselves, is it actionable? If yes, and we can do it in less than two minutes, we just do it. And if not, we'll consider delegating it. If we can do that, then we'll move it to the waiting for list. If we decide to do it ourselves, then we need to figure out if it's a one-step task that can be done later in that case, it goes into next actions, or if it's part of a larger project, in which case it goes into projects. And finally, if an item is not actionable, it's probably an event, 
a someday maybe item or project support material. So move it to your calendar, the someday maybe list, or into your project supports material place. I keep my project support materials in Notion. I go through all of my inboxes in this matter once a day, and it usually takes me less than 10 minutes. And two small tricks I wanted to share that I use to simplify the system even further. First is sometimes a task is just a small action I need to be reminded of on a certain day, like canceling a trial subscription. In that case, there's absolutely no point in seeing it before that day. So I created a reminders section in my next actions list, and I add some non-tasks there with deadlines, and I keep this section collapsed because I don't ever review it. So these tasks just will automatically show up in my today list when they're due. And by the way, for trial subscriptions, I set the deadline a few days before the actual date, just in case I don't check to do this for a day or two, like especially on the weekends or public holidays. And I also add important details to this task, like the trials and date and the potential charge. So I really don't ignore it. And I also use tags for tasks that can be done in specific settings. So I have two of Slovenia and city uh, tasks marked with these tags can only be done either when I'm in Slovenia or when I am downtown and that's an easy way for me to filter out those tasks in the moment. In GTD speak these lists are called contextual lists. Now your system is set up and you can move on to the final two steps of the GTD framework, review and engage. In the morning I go through my next actions list and I choose what I plan to do today and I add two days deadline to those tasks. I then check my projects list and my calendar and see if there are any action steps that need to be added based on these. And I also scroll through my upcoming tasks a few times a week just to make sure nothing huge is coming up in the future that I did not start working towards. And finally, I look at my someday maybe and waiting for a list less often, maybe once a week. So that's my GTD setup for Todoist. I hope you learned something useful today. And if you have any questions or ideas how to improve this setup, drop them in the comments. I'd love to chat. If you want to see how I use GTD in a paper, platter, watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!